This is my second video, and I'm going to do an unboxing. And I wanted to shout out to Ivana, Pecantan Beauty, and uh, Lori. I didn't mention the three of you in the last video because I'm doing a second one. So shout out to you and specifically because I have such a beautiful handbag collection because of you guys. Um, and um, as I said in the previous video, um, these are bags I can afford and I can have. But um, your videos, especially Pecan Tan Beauty, the, the production that you do on your videos is so gorgeous and so beautiful and very helpful. So it's an art doing unboxings. And I mean, Duty and Burke should hire you. You do such a, a amazing job of really showing the mechanics and the details and the, and the beautiful way in which you maintain your bags is admirable. Um, your video quality is beautiful. But all the women, I think, contribute to this dialogue about handbags. And it should be a happy dialogue. Um, I happen to love, uh, someday I would love to own a, a Neverpool a Louis Vuitton. Uh, I think the bags are stunning. And I think he's one of, that's one of the one of design houses that still make designer bags affordable to women compared to other designer companies. And they are uh, really high quality. Uh, the way in which the um, logo and is it and the um, design, the color is beautifully done, and that's why it's such a classic, iconish bag. The 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 particular uh, font and design of that um, monogram for Louis Vuitton is. Uh, is iconic, is absolutely historical. So I can see why it's been timeless because it's just a beautiful, um, so that, that is, um, uh, their, their things are beautiful. So here's a piece of artwork I'm going to unbox. I've already, um, sliced off the tape, so I didn't take too much time, but, um, this is an artist that I carry in my gallery and her name is Michelle Usabelli. And, um, here's a different kind of art and she does beautiful contemporary impressionism that means it's a little tiny more abstract French impressionists did um, impressions of light emanating from landscape so many artists have implemented that technique and then they do it in a kind of a little more contemporary way the colors um, and the shell is one of those and she does amazing figurative paintings in landscapes. So I have not seen this particular painting. Now I did un unheave the tape on this because the, for time's sake. This is a new painting she just sent to me of an umbrella looking out towards, see how fresh her, her brushwork is. Very immediate, more contemporary, but it's, it is an impressionism painting of umbrella with a woman sitting underneath with, you know, the colorful type um, beach chairs looking out to very simple. And this is a tiny little painting. See the scale of it? And that's the thing on the internet. When you have pictures like this or paintings, it's hard to tell what size they are. You know, you can have a giant one next to a small painting. So scale really helps in for clients to see the actual original. But when I point out, this is only like a I think it's like a five by five inch painting. And you can see how much she, she established very loosely. And again, her name is uh, Michelle. Beautiful colors, complimentary colors. You can see the green there and the red, that's complimentary. And so um, she uses that quite a bit in blue colors, but that's the ocean. There's the person sitting there, here's an umbrella. So, and then these are um, beach chairs lined up and this was just a day and she painted this on location she was probably sitting there and saw this scene and just quickly and a lot of times artists will also do a bigger painting from this this is almost like a study in a sense and so I don't know she may have she may have this painting for like 550 something like that but um, artists work a lot from smaller pieces to make large ones and this original oil by the way so let's see what else I was supposed to get three paintings like most artists, I never know exactly what I'm going to get in terms of paintings. It's almost like getting the Dooney and Burke bag. Um, and here.
here's a, a box came in. So she's shipping me. So you can see some of the unboxings I do. Um, she lives in this area, but sometimes artists can't get into the galleries directly. So they'll send me pieces to save time. And she's been with me for about five years. Very talented. I'm, in fact, most of the artists I show are way more talented than I am. They are phenomenal people, too. And here's another one that's quite interesting, quite different. And I haven't seen these paintings, so I'm exploring it with you. Look at that. Now, this is a little bigger painting. This is 12 by 14-ish. And it's two people sitting out at a carnival, a festival. We have festival, um, you know, traveling festivals that come to our area in different locations. And so she sat down and painted that. Um, may have taken a few photographs, not sure, but she's a plein air painting painter and paints on location, figurative work. So she probably asked them to hold still <laughs> while she did the painting. But you can see the beautiful color of, her, of the woman's shirt, the red, and this blue jean is the complement of that yellow. So artists think about all that when they're doing a painting, what colors and, um, and emphasizes them. So I'm sure this is the color shirt she had, but the artist picked up on this composition. And then it's very interesting to see, see the Ferris wheel in the distance and how loosely that she paints. And you can see that it's a painting because of the painterly, we call it painterly way in which she painted. So you see how rough it is? It's blotches and of paint. And the French Impressionists were really wonderful about showing blotches of paint. And then you pull back and it comes into more realism. And that's the beauty of creativity. Look at these beautiful taupey colors, balances out the bright. So it kind of is informative of how we dress you know, wearing these neutral colors and then popping it with a bright color bag, like that beautiful butter yellow that they had in the Dooney and Burke, I guess it was the smooth leather hobo, had this butter yellow, also the sunflower yellow. So it's fun to, to contrast, you know, a dull, soft gray tones with a pop of color. You can also do, you know, wear a yellow outfit and put a blue bag. So this is how I work my bag collection. I think in terms of these color um, arrangements. Like this is the col this is my favorite color. It is the burgundy. This is purple burgundy. Love the crimson color, and it looks well with the blue. And crimson actually looks great with yellow too. Warm tones. And then right next to that is the green of the lawn. So when you wear khaki green, wearing the um, crimson color against khaki green is a really beautiful combination. Um, today, I'm wearing these colors. And this knee that's showing, these are the colors I'm wearing today with a touch of khaki green and my bag. So this is kind of um, showing how painting and art and design, and when I talk about when we talk about Louis Vuitton or Hermes or any of these designer bags, you notice the texture of the canvas. The canvas comes in a variety of um, fabric. So here's the back, and this is called daydreaming. See the canvas? This is cotton duck, and it is the old, in Europe, they used to use sailcloth. And then use stretcher bars. You see this around the edge of the canvas. These stretcher bars support the fabric upon which the painting is painted. And see how tough that is. But it's fabric. It's cotton made out of, it's heavy sail cloth is really what they used on boats. And so artists who didn't have enough money used fabric because it was cheap at the time and used bits of wood to make the canvas into a structured shape, a rectangle, right? In the old days, they used to use wood panel was the best way to show a painting, how they painted, but wood became scarce in Europe and became very expensive and artists couldn't afford it. So this was an inexpensive way and a lighter way in which to paint 
on their easels and it was easier to carry around, not as heavy as a panel, wood, solid wood panel. Some artists today have gone back to painting on wood panel and guys, that's perfectly acceptable because wood panel never disintegrates. Canvas can, if it gets mold on it, disintegrates on you over hundreds of years if it's been left in you know, uh, water, just like any piece of fabric that you wear. So the texture of a Louis Vuitton bag is the texture of canvas. Um, some canvases are linen, and there's all different grades of canvas, all different grades of linen and texture and nubbiness. And so when you compare, for example, the Dooney and Burke texture to a Dooney and Burke or, or to a Louis Vuitton or any other high designer bag that uses canvas, you're gonna have different textures based on the fabric they use, based on the process that they use um, for the coating. And um, they, they, there are patented, um, some of the companies have patents on the way the coating works on those bags to protect them. Because if you get mildew and mold, it'll destroy the fabric over time. And so they have to have a coating on it in order to protect it from stains um, because canvas is cotton like your clothes and it can stain and it can rip and it keeps it from absorbing water because water decays fabric and it does that on canvases too over over years and you'll see spots and things on old paintings so this is the stuff even heavier than this real heavy gauge uh, is what they use the handbags for and here it is being used as a painting. And I wanted to show the relationship between handbags and paintings. And that's how I'm linking it together. So you can learn a lot about texture. And so artists use that texture of the canvas to work into their paintings. And that's why it's so painterly. So um, that's just a real short education about. So, uh, and some, you know, some bags have higher quality of resins on them and some have lesser quality. It depends on your price point. Um, but that's what, you know, was available to Louis Vuitton and he came up with a great way and the whole purpose was to have it them be lighter weight so they weren't, bags weren't so heavy with solid leather for one thing and better protected. So when they, when people traveled with his luggage and also they could float better, uh, you know, if you have a leather bag, it just sinks to the bottom of the you know, saturates it, goes boom. And so there was a practicality in figuring out how to protect the cotton and make it into a bag that was luxury and gorgeous. And they did a great job. And so other companies have emulated, they all emulate each other, come on. And so, um, and, I, and I'm not gonna get into a debate of what kind of resins they use and all that for the protection, but um, it's, it's an, a great idea. And so it comes from, we forget, but it comes from sailcloth, what they used to sail boats across the ocean. And artists used it, and Louis Vuitton used it, and bag manufacturers used it, and came up with a really novel idea. And it was, and he patented it. So, um, you know, these designs are, and that's what you pay for. You pay for somebody's invention with his name on it and a name recognition. Um, but the Dooney and Burke uh, canvas bags, they're tough too, because they're made out of tough cotton, um, you know, canvas. So, and there's different textures that go with those different, the type of fabric they choose. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're spending $1,200 on a canvas bag, it better be good. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the, the high end of spending 175 on a bag, you know, it's sort of apples and oranges a little bit. So that's what I wanted to share. And isn't that beautiful painting? So these are the two that I unboxed today. Another type of art besides handbags. So thank you for watching. You have any other questions, go ahead. Um, for those of you who are subscribing and want to make comments, please do. And, um, but this artist is talented, isn't she? Um, doing figurative this loosely um, on a small surface. This uh, look at look at the light emana emanating off the guy's knee and her hair. See the light coming off. So impressionism about showing the light bouncing off the subject. So thank you for watching, and I'm gonna go to work and see if I can sell these babies. I think the artist will appreciate it if I get to work and sell her work. 
Okay, bye-bye.